Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be taking a look at this review copy I was sent of On the Shoulders of Giants, which was written by Chance Phillips and illustrated by Scrap Princess. So a little bit of background before we begin here. Uh, Chance Phillips recently came to prominence in the OSR because he won one of the revolting youth pitches for Lamentations of the Flame Princess. So James Raji ran this promotion called Revolting Youth, where the idea was to get younger people like teenagers into creating new adventures for Lamentations and for D&D in general. And Chance won one of those pitches. I believe, I believe that his was for running a jungle hex crawl with like cannibals and Tarzan and things like that. And Tarzan like, you know, eight men, which is a really cool idea. I would totally play that. Um, and in case you missed that, uh, Chance Phillips is a teenager. I believe he's 15 or 16 years old. So um, he's putting out D&D books already. So what are you doing with your life? Get on it, guys. People are putting out great stuff. It doesn't matter how old you are. And there's a lot of really fantastic stuff in this book that I want to take a look at. So uh, here's our back cover. Uh, this was put out as a print-on-demand book by DriveThruRPG. And I will put a link down in the description below as usual where you can check that out. So basically the idea here is that this is a mini setting. It's almost like a mini plane. I think I would mostly use it as that because it's rather briefly sketched out. It's not super detailed. So if you wanted to run it as a full-on campaign setting, you'd probably have to put quite a bit of work into it. But if you wanted to run it as like a pocket dimension or like a weird plane that you send your players to, I think it would be excellent because it has these really strong visual images of what the world looks like. Uh, the basic idea is that you have your classic 12 Olympian gods and the, they're huge. They're the size of like, you know, small worlds or mountains or things like that. And they duke it out and eventually they all killed each other. And now their um, dead corpses are just floating through the void. And from their corpses sprung these maggots and from the maggots uh, eventually evolved humans. And so you have these whole civilizations living on these dead god bodies floating through space. And each civilization has qualities of the god that it sprang from. It's a great little setting idea that I would love to throw players if they like walk through the wrong portal, right? Um, so it's all written for Lamentations. Uh, and we start off with a couple of new classes, including the Conspirator, which uh, allows you to alter some dice rolls, like altering your d20 rolls, your damage, and so on, as long as you can explain um, what plan or conspiracy you cooked up ahead of time to make that happen, which I think is really fun. We have the Corpse Worker, which are the engines that run the industries throughout the 12 bodies. They're good at climbing and architecture. We have the prize fighter, which is basically a type of fighter. You can see he has a, a fighter progression for his attack bonus here, but he has less hit points. One of his main advantages, though, is that uh, he can very easily uh, graft and remove limbs uh, via the witch doctor, which is a different class. Normally doing so involves a lot of penalties, but the prize fighter can do it without those penalties. So he's kind of like a Frankenstein fighter, which is a really fun idea. Uh, we have the Witch Doctor, as I said, which can perform experiments. It's kind of like a magic user. You can see the low hit points here. Um, but we'll get to the experiments later. They're a lot of fun. Um, all the art, as I said, is by Scrap Princess, and it does a great job, as Scrap's art always does. It evokes these strong, emotional, visceral images that communicate the feel of a place very quickly. We have a page on equipment with things like maggot jerky and maggot steaks some of the strange um, bio-horror elements of this universe. And we're, here we have experiments which the Witch Doctor can perform. And what sets them apart from normal spells is that you need specific items to create them, and they often take long periods of time, like an hour or a day, which I really like. So they're essentially rituals that you need to have actual items to perform. So this allows you to go on quests to acquire these materials, and then you have to plan ahead of time to set off the experiments. And I really like that element of foresight and planning, which I think is often neglected in class design. I like classes that have to do that. There's a lot of really great um, experiments that they can do here. I think there's 13 listed in total, inc including grafting limbs, as I mentioned, or one that allows you to form darts made out of blood that you can shoot at people. A lot of cool things like that. We have the 12 peoples of the body. So here's the different civilizations, right? Each of them is based on a, t a different god and has properties of that god. Uh, for example, anyone from the body of Artemis 
Uh, consuming Artemis' essence leads to great precision and accuracy, both physically and mentally. Their skin has a silvery sheen, of course, because Artemis is a goddess of the moon. Uh, mining on a body. So mining is really important for all of these civilizations. All of their resources and their materials come from these dead gods. So he goes into how the different parts of the gods are useful. Um, blood is used for all sorts of different things. Bone is incredibly uh, tough. We have things like organs, which no one has ever quite found, but people are still mining to find. Great little world building ideas. We have a variety of new monsters, including a demon which are not creatures of fire, but of acid and reside in a body's stomach and come crawling out of their nose to entice and make deals with humans. That's a great little twist on demons. A fang beast, a flesh eater, some different types of maggots that you can get. A Promethean, which is like a walking tank that's piloted by a demon inside. And sky squids, which are these squids that um, float through the void of space in between bodies. So if you want to go from one body to another, you can jump on a, a sky squid and hope it goes to the right place. Usually you can direct which direction they're going in, but it can be a little bit random. So you might end up in a different body. And we have a little outline of an adventure at the end called the Grey Pools. It's more like a setting um, or like a location adventure. So it's the gray pools are part of one of the gods where you have these pools in their head. And there's all sorts of weird things that can happen there. He describes side effects of bathing in these pools, uh, psychic powers that are relevant, and some non-player characters that might show up in an adventure like this. For example, the servitor, which is an attendant to the gray pools. Um, by resident, It's attracted by resi sorry, residual psychic energies. And so you can roll on this table to see what they're actually like. They're kind of robotic in one way or another. A variety of adventure ideas that you can simply pull out if you want to start a uh, adventure hook or a campaign here in the 12 bodies. And some random monsters. We actually have a monster generator at the back of this, which is really cool. Not a whole lot of books include things like that. Basic referee advice uh, in terms of generating monsters and some inspiration in the back, which is also really cool and which doesn't show up enough in RPG books. So we have references to other big OSR things like the Black Hack, Yoon Suin, Carcosa, and so on. We also have an appendix at the back for using this with the Black Hack, which is a really cool idea so that you can easily um, use it with that system if you prefer the more streamlined roll underness of the Black Hack. And we have an NPC class called the Maggot Farmer. There we go. On the Shoulders of Giants. That's it. Like I said, it's a very terse little book that sketches out a very weird but also very vivid setting. So if you're into something like that, especially if you want to send your players off to a weird dimension just to freak them out for a little bit, this is a really great book to pick up. It's also great to support new and upcoming artists like Chance. I'm really excited to see where he goes in the future and what his new book for Lamentations is going to look like. So join me next Wednesday when I review the last two issues of Wormskin. So there's going to be eight issues in total, and this is the end of the Wormskin line. There are other things planned for Wormskin in the future, but for the time being, this is going to be it. So join me next Wednesday when I look at um, everything that we have here. Uh, that's basically it for my review today. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Remember that you can support this channel on Patreon if you want to support my work and spreading the OSR across YouTube and across the RPG world in general. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys next time.